having a really quite an unusual time here lately. And um, one of the things that I've learned in ministry, and we, we have to learn in ministry, is, you know, just because God is bothering you about something doesn't mean that uh, your something is for everyone. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. I mean, one of the worst things, one of the worst things you can do, is is to be in a place with God, and then you take that place or what God is dealing with you about, what God is speaking to you about, saying to you, and superimpose that on the larger group. Amen. Some things just really is God is dealing with you about something. Amen. Amen. And, and a lot of times, especially in ministry, um, we will take, you know, a thing that God is, you know, dealing with us about it and we make it about everybody. There are cases when it really is about all of us. But more often than not, that's about you. Now, I know that this could not be true because, why, well, you're perfect. <coughs> but the longer I live with me, um, the more kind of realization I'm, 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 I'm coming to a place where, you know, I'm not so perfect after all. <laughs> all you got to do is just hang out with yourself a while and be honest about what you see and what you hear, about what comes from you. Boy, I'm preaching good. And, you know, don't shout me down, though. Um, this is really why um, God, according to the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter number uh, 8, maybe it's around verse number 29, says that God is, he is in the process, he is in the business of conforming us to the image of Christ. Because my current or present image is not good enough. Not for what he has in mind. Say amen to that. Amen. I mean, if, if it was, well, if it was, you wouldn't even need to be saved. You wouldn't need a savior. You, you, you wouldn't need Calvary. You wouldn't need the cross. I wouldn't need the blood of Jesus. Are you, are you tracking with me? Um, but I need all of that. And, and then after... After I come to the cross and after I receive the blood of Jesus, listen, after I, I, re I repent of my sin, I confess my sin and I repent of it, I renounce my sin and confess him as Lord and Savior and receive him. I, it's not over. The work is not over. I mean, in actuality, it's just beginning. You've made a good step. But it's just a good first step. Receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior uh, uh, by no means is finality. Are you okay? Amen. By no means is that finality. It's the first step on a long journey. A journey that will take you the entirety of your earthly existence. Yeah. Yeah, I wish we had time. We talked about perfection uh, a little bit. There is ultimate perfection. Ultimate perfection is when I leave here and I go there. If I make it there. <laughs> ultimate perfection. Uh, Paul talks about uh, what the big brain people call relative perfection. Relative perfection is, is, you know, the Bible says, he that knoweth to do and doeth not, to him is what? Relative perfection is, is that I walk in accordance to the revealed word of God to me. That what I know of the word of God, I bear the responsibility to walk in it. Are you here? Yes. You know, there's a reason, listen to me now, beyond laziness, there's a reason why some people don't read their Bible. There is a reason, because they don't want to walk in when, when, when you read that, when God shows it to you, you become responsible. Right. And there, quite honestly, there are people who duck responsibility. Yeah. Don't want anything to do with it. Nothing. Now, 
Hold your mind now, because your mind is flowing and wondering and thinking about all the people you know that don't want to walk in the But for every single one of us, there is an area of responsibility that we struggle walking in. Boy, you know. You got to be. Amen. We, we had somebody around here years ago and just say, tell the truth. You need to tell the truth. And not, don't just tell the truth on me. You need to tell the truth on me. Because it's easy to point out some stuff about me. Yeah. Really. And there's some folks that's good at it. But your walk with the Lord is not about me. It's about you and God. Amen. Yeah. So anyway, I um, some things the Lord has really been dealing with me about. And I'm glad. I, I'm thankful for summer. I love summer. And and all that it brings and all that it has to offer. I'm glad it's winding down. I am, I, you know, now, now I'm, not, I'm not one of those winter guys. Don't, you know, pastor praying for snow. No, he isn't. There ain't nobody moving snow at my house but me. Now, I'm, not, I'm not praying for snow. I don't, I don't like the, uh, I'm not praying for that. But typically in, 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 the, in the life of a church, Summertime means we're, we're somewhat scattered. Right. And, you know, there are just so many things to do, so many things you can do, and we have such a short, a small window until we do them. Say amen. amen. Now, all the doers ain't saying that now. You're looking sheepish. No, I'll just do them. As soon as I can, I'm doing them too. <laughs> just do them. And we enjoy the summer and that kind of thing. But summers have a tendency to, um, to disjoin us and disconnect us. It, not just, not, see, when, when, you, when you get disconnected physically, then, then it, it, it becomes easier to be disjointed and disconnected mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. As much as you make time for vacation, um, a nap, uh, a round of golf, going to the mall, a movie, y'all ain't saying amen, amen. A, a fish fry, dinner, uh, whatever, you, you, need to, you need to intentionally and purposefully make time for one another. Amen. And listen, listen, and you have to resist the tendency to do it in a clickish manner. It, it, it can't just be a special three or four. Because without even trying, it becomes a thing. Yeah. Are you tracking with me? Are you, are you, you going gonna to be okay? Yeah, even if you're not, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, I, I, I need you to be okay. See, there is something in New Bethel, and I had a, you know, I, I got up this morning, I, I was up three, four times in the middle of the night, and I, and, and I said to the Lord, I said, don't you know I'm tired? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just ever been really honest with God? I keep telling y'all, he can handle it. He can handle it. And the Lord said, you know, it's not even about your tiredness right now. It's about what I'm trying to get to you. And I said, you can't do it in the waking hours. <laughs> and he said, well, you've been busy. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of the ways. That, when God begins to interrupt your sleep, that's an indication that you're a little busy for him during your waking hours. There's an insight for whatever it's worth. There's an insight. And so um, I sat up in the bed and I went downstairs and came back upstairs and slept for about an hour and a half and then back up again, same routine, did it a third time. I got up this morning and printed out some notes for what I believed was a wonderful sermon that I was going to share <laughs> with you this morning. And, um, and the Lord said, nah, that's not what I want to talk about today. And I'm like, shucks, <laughs> I wish you hadn't gave me a heads up. But it's just, just dealing with me about our, 
our usness, our togetherness, our, our unity. Let me read a passage to you. Okay, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. I like that, in harmony. And you know what harmony is? It, 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 is, it, is, it doesn't mean, now I'm not a musical guy per se, you know, and I sing, I can, listen, I can sing. With some people, you can, write, you can write a song on a piece of paper and give it to them and put them, put them in their pocket and they still can't carry a song. And they got it in their pocket and can't carry a song. I can carry a tune. Say amen. amen. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling something. <laughs> here's, here's one of our, all too often we see someone doing something very well and, and right away, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can, no, you can't. If you could, you'd be doing it. Yeah. Just say amen, even if you don't believe it. It's truth. It's truth. But listen, desire and ability are not the same thing. Amen. Oh, everybody say anointing. anointing. We are not all anointed the same way to do the same thing. And be careful that your flesh doesn't fool you into thinking you can do something that somebody else is doing. Because they're doing it well. You know some of the greatest quarterbacks will emerge this season. Never ever played a lick of organized football. But come Monday morning, watching replays on ESPN, I will be the best quarterback not in the league. Say man. You know why? You know what will make me the best quarterback? Because I have the benefit of super slow-mo replay. I have the benefit of 30 different camera angles. And so I know I could have made that pass. Thank you. But in real time, I'd have got my back broken. In real time, under fire, in a live situation, I can't be there. If I could, I would. And under fire, if you could handle it, you'd be here. Desire does not equal ability. It doesn't. What has God gifted you? talented you, equipped you, anointed you, and appointed you to do. And sometimes we can't find that out because we're too busy coveting what somebody else is doing. I'm too, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy watching Jakes to get a word from the Lord for the house that he's given me responsibility over. I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy tracking Cheryl Brady to get a, a word from you don't have to reheat somebody's bread to feed to a different group of people. Look, somebody say leftovers. leftovers. You know, and I can tolerate leftovers the next night. You know, but now two, three nights later, uh, listen, you, you go on, I'll go order me some Chinese or something. You, you go ahead. God, just, you get me a pizza, just something fresh. Amen. And there is a word from the Lord. The reason we can't find it is because we're busy absorbing what God has given everybody else. And if you would take some time and get before God, you'd see that God has a word to give to you. God has a task. He has a role. He has a job. He has a gifting. He has an appointing for you. You don't have to covet what I'm doing. You don't have to covet what I'm doing. Please don't. Everybody want to be a pastor. You, you think this... When we get in the parking lot, we can have some conversation. This is, this is holy ground. I feel like, like God told Moses, take your shoes off. This ain't no joke. And pre being, the ability to preach doesn't make you a pastor. Amen. The ability to preach doesn't make you a pastor. Just means you have the ability to preach. Doesn't make you a pastor. And because I can sing doesn't make me a worship leader. 
And the three chords I know on the electric guitar that my dad taught me when I was six years old doesn't mean that I can tell Dean Cooper, move over, I got this. Because I ain't done nothing with them three chords in, let's see, six, uh, uh, 53 minus, well, you know, you can do the math. I ain't done nothing with them three chords in low these many years. Do you understand? My focus, my point of emphasis is, is that this is body ministry. Would you say body ministry? Body ministry. And we'll never function where we are supposed to function until you find your place. And you, until you get in your place. You have to get in your place. You have to get in your place. And listen, let me help you now. Your place is not coveting the place that I occupy. My place is not coveting the place that you occupy. We bring disorder to the house of God. 